Here's a quick video to show the application of record and measure for adding new control points. We'll use this function frequently, in particular when establishing new projects after the initial setup off of the surveyor's grid lines or markings. We can add additional control points in a more logical or convenient locations. Additionally, we'll use this function when setting out large floor plans on multi-storey buildings. Inevitably, you're going to get a few blind spots, for example, behind columns, walls, or elevator shafts. So we use this feature to quickly relocate your station around the project to get a full layout of the job. For this demonstration here, you'll see that I have already stationed the tool using three control points. You'll find the record and measure application in the menu bar at the center of the screen. To access that, just tap and drag down. Tap on the record and measure function. Tap on the right side bar to bring out the options menu. We can select what type of points we are recording, that is layout points or control points in the attributes. We can customize the name by tapping on the text bar. If the sequence already exists, in this case CP, it's added uh, the next one to that sequence. The grey drop down menu gives us the option to select which layer the control points are added to. Tap the bar again to close. So now we've defined what we want to record, next we will identify the targets where we want to measure. Turn the camera on using the arrow at the top menu. Here we can open the measure mode menu. We have two options, laser or prism. For this first example I'll show you the laser measure mode. In camera mode we have a few additional functions. On the left we have zoom and joystick. On the right we have back, auto locate and lock and confirm. We can move around the screen by tapping a new location and we can zoom in and out by using the scroller. You can see however with digital zoom it might not be the clearest through the viewfinder. Uh, so you will have to be able to get access to go up and size, which I'll transition to now. So here you can see what it looks like outside of the screen. And by tapping using the joystick, you can tap left and right and adjust it to suit. Once you're happy that you've matched the target, you press the red uh, arrows to re-measure. It says success and you can see there that control point 4 has been added to the screen. It's important to note here that if you are measuring manually to a crosshair or a nail or a pin and sighting it, you do run the risk of having human error and the associated uh, inaccuracies. If you're happy with that, if you accept that, then this function will be very quick and, uh, and uh, a very easy way to move around the project. Having said that, with the second method I can show you, we can change the measure mode to prism. And within this option here, what we can do is get the tool to lock onto a target plate. As you can see here, go into measure mode, we'll change that target type to a POA26, which is the target plate which comes with the PLT300. And by positioning these on the project, you can get the tool to do the work. It can select it. So we'll select the POA26 here. Press tick to confirm. Once selected, we can go into the screen through the camera, tap, and then 
if we uh, press tick to confirm, it will automatically lock to that target plate as if it were as if it were a prism. Hit measure, and there is your control point five. The beauty of using target plates is that if you can put it in a permanent location, particularly if you're establishing a new project, is that when you come back to do your stationing, the tool can auto-locate that target plate and you can use the automatic or semi-automatic stationing function.